So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, a direct comparison between St. Thomas versus Brett Schneider cardioplegic solution for minimally invasive mitral valve surgery. We have no disclosures. So, we have two different uh, cardioplegic solutions, Brett Schneider and St. Thomas uh, cardioplegic solution. It, the difference is that Brett Schneider uses a kind of intracellular electrolyte concentration and St. Thomas a kind of extracellular electrolyte concentration. Um, the main difference is in the additional ingredients. So we have here uh, histidine in Brett Schneider as a buffer for acidosis, tryptophan uh, which stabilizes the cell membrane and ketoglutarate, which has an effect on ATP production during reperfusion time. Um, the buffer in St. Thomas is sodium bicarbonate. The aim of our study was to compare this, uh, both uh, solutions in our minimally invasive mitral surgeries. Altogether, we had 453 minimal minimally invasive mitral surgeries in, from January 2006 to December 2013. Um, in every patient there was a mitral valve repair or a mitral valve uh, replacement. Additionally, we had 122 dry cuspid repairs, 76 ASD PFO closures, and 82 MACE procedures in these patients. Here's another uh, picture where I want to show you that there are two quite different groups. So a much uh, larger group with St. Thomas and a smaller group with Red Schneider, only 15%. And to compare these two groups, we did a propensity score matching. In this slide, you can see the characteristics. And we have differences in age and we have differences in concomitant tricuspid valve repair, as well as in the number of mitral valve repairs. So these parameters were excluded and the patients were matched one to one. And as you can see here, there were no differences between these two groups in the most terms of the characteristics. To our basic operative data, I want to explain. So we have uh, patients from January 2006 to December 2013 who were included. In every patient, there was a right mini me. In every patient, we used a remote access perfusion system over the um, femoral vessels. And of course, additionally, we used also uh, venous uh, jugular access if needed. In every patient, we use the transthoracic aortic clamping, and we use since 2005 in every patient distal leg perfusion um, to uh, prevent a compartment syndrome. In this video, you see our cannulation for the cardioplegia and the thoracic clamping. So, our results. Perioperatively, we have seen that the operation time as well as the bypass time was longer in the St. Thomas group, but we had no difference in gross clamp time between these two groups. The need for ECMO uh, at the end of the operation was one in St. Thomas and two in Brad Schneider with no difference in the statistic. Postoperatively, we had uh, the same um, duration of ICU stay with 20 and 21 hours. We had one patient with uh, myocardial infarction in the St. Thomas group, one patient with stroke in the St. Thomas group. But we have seen a higher incidence of atrial fibrillation in the Brett Schneider group with 19 versus 8. This is some kind we can see in the literature. The renal impairment postoperatively wasn't different and was quite well. Another point are the laboratory parameters. Um, 
global signs of ischemia were both quite similar in both groups. But uh, what we can see is that um, we have a higher number of um, the cardiac related isoenzyme CK and B in the St. Thomas group versus the Brad Schneider group. Intraoperatively, we have seen that we have to buffer more in the Brad Schneider group, as uh, St. Thomas, as I told you, brings its buffer with it. I want to conclude. Both cardioplegic solutions can be safely used in minimally invasive mitral of surgery. We have seen that Brad Schneider's solution has small protective potential for the myocardium, and, but postoperatively we cannot translate it to a clinical benefit. But we have to announce that the incidence for atrial fibrillation is higher with you when using Brett Schneider. Thank you for your attention. Questions? Uh, Yuri Kalisin, congratulations on the very, uh, very illustrative results. Um, can, can you please uh, maybe comment a little bit on the um, differences of uh, perioperative atrial fibrillation concerning uh, Brett Schneider and Thomas too. Um, the differences in atrial fibrillation? Yeah, yeah, the mechanisms. What, what do you propose, the reasonings um, for, for the, the, the observed differences? Mm, Thank you. The, in literature, you can see that it depends on different calcium concentrations during operation and after operation. Thank you for the question. <coughs> I just had a quick question. How often do you redose your plegia? Sorry, I missed Pardon? that. How often do you redose? Uh, redose at St. Thomas? Yeah. Uh, every 20 minutes. And the same with the Brett Schneider? No, no, no. Brett Schneider is a single dose infusion. And okay. um, this is um, intraoperatively for the surgeon quite a difference. So you don't have to stop every 20 minutes when using Brett Schneider. It's interesting, at uh, Boston Children's Hospital, we use uh, our Del Nido cardioplegia, which is developed by our chairman. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's uh, four parts to one part crystalloid blood. Mm -hmm. And it's a one shot for any type of congenital case, be it mm -hmm. 40 minutes or 200 minutes. One, one shot and yeah. uh, blood, crystalloid yes. blood yeah. cardioplegia. I mean, it's a crystalloid blood mixture, okay. but it works well. Okay, great. A good question. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I would like to congratulate and uh, make uh, some comment mm -hmm. on uh, behalf of the uh, uh, blood cardioplegia. In our institution, uh, I'm from Mass Italy. We also do much uh, cardioplegia with blood than with uh, Brett Schneider. And we have seen also differences in uh, post-operative delirium in uh, Brett Schneider is, I think, uh, a bit higher. I don't remember exactly the numbers. I think they are twice as big. In your case, you have some Thomas with uh, Beth Schneider, so it's a little bit different situation. So, mm -hmm. uh, very good job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I don't have the data of uh, postoperative uh, delirium for these patients, so I cannot comment. Thank you. <laughs>